Sideline Stories episode 5 features Dan Lust. Dan went to Union College, Fordham Law School, and is now a sports and entertainment attorney at Garagos and Garagos. He also hosts Conduct Detrimental, the number one sports law podcast in the country. Let's dive into the world of sports law. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Sideline Stories, episode number five, Look Alive. We got Dan Lust coming in. He's a sports and entertainment attorney for Garagos and Garagos. Dan, thanks so much for joining us today. Let's get right into it with the questions. Who was your favorite athlete growing up? I grew up as a really big hockey fan. Uh, So when I was very little, it was Wayne Gretzky. NBA Finals, who do you think is going to win it all this year? See, at this point, I'm, I'm more of like a better than I necessarily am a fan of, of these sports. I mean, I'm a Knicks fan. They have absolutely no chance. I have money on the Nets and the Bucks to come out of the East and win. Um, I think I got the Nets at seven, uh, plus 750, seven half to one. And I got the Bucks at 10 to one. So um, let's go with who will make me money. One of those two teams will make me money. Let's, let's root for the East. Who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? Who do you have winning it all? Um, I am a Buffalo Bills fan, which Brandon, I'm not sure if you knew. Um, I think the Bills are really solid. I don't, uh, I don't see why they would necessarily take a step back if Josh Allen has another year of improvement. Uh, I'm cool with the Bills. I mean, obviously, I could take the Chiefs, but like, you know, or the or the Bucks. But I think the Bills are solid. I, don't, I think the Bills a decent chance here. What's one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self, or something you wish you knew as you were getting started with your career? Um. I mean, it's different. When I when I was younger, um, you know, pre-law school, social media wasn't as big as it is now. Uh, it was not. So I guess the way, what I would tell you guys, you guys are going to grow up, uh, those listening to this are going to be in that social media world. Um, you were you were only as valuable in your life as your network is strong. Um, and what I, you know, and obviously I'm, I'm turning 33 this year. So I, you know, I've seen it enough. Um, and during the pandemic, I really hunkered down. Brendan, you probably can attest to this. The, there's I'm always trying to, you know in life you always have to be trying to network right there's a there's a thing um, in sales always be closing ABC um, but you can take that expression and make it your own always be networking there's always things you can be doing to meet other people during the pandemic uh, that world was kind of shut down all these networking events these stupid wine and cheeses that we would go to you know um, those those stopped existing I think what I would be telling my younger self uh, or you guys that have grown up the social media era it is never too early to start uh, building out your brand and building out your network. And you never know, um, you know what kind of take to go viral. Um, my story started with a, an article I wrote about Kevin Durant, how he could possibly sue the Golden State Warriors for medical malpractice. He's not gonna do it, but I said, I'm like, hey, I practice in the medical malpractice vicinity. Let's have a legal exercise and say the Warriors didn't properly advise Durant of his uh, the risk that he could tear his Achilles after his calf strain back in the finals a couple years ago. Right. Like, assuming that all these rumors are true, that everyone's reporting and that, like, you know, Durant's crying and his mom is blaming the doctors, assuming all that to be true, could he sue for medical malpractice? And I wrote a blog, an article and uh, I wrote, yes. And because Durant makes so much money and his career could be in jeopardy and you're going to take years off his career, like, a lot of money, a couple hundreds of millions. And, and it's not crazy to ask for a billion if you're already asking for a couple hundred million. So right. That week that I had, and I wasn't anybody in sports, I had, they just had wrote some tech articles, like legal tech. Uh, that story got picked up by Fox and you know Fox Sports and ESPN, CBS, and any Dan Levitard show and Bill Simmons. Um, so yeah, I mean, you never you never know uh, what kind of takes will get picked up, and it's never too early to start. I think the main one from this NFL offseason, kind of the elephant in the room. What do you think is going to happen with Deshaun Watson? We'll dumb it down. I mean, I, I could tell you, you know, he's going to be uh, guilty or innocent, or he's going to be liable, or he's going to get he's going to get off the civil charges. All I can tell you is that he has walked himself and his lawyer into a very, we'll say, a, a, a small. I don't know. A very there's a small exit strategy. You put it that way. He he's charged or he's being uh, hit with 20 civil cases, and they're alleging some form of sexual assault. His lawyer has essentially come out and said, hey, I know they're alleging this was sexual assault, but this was all consensual. So, okay, fine. I guess you're not guilty of sexual assault if you think it's consensual, Um, which is a fine argument. That's the only argument you could make. The problem that Watson's going to have, and I'm getting to the the prediction, is like 
He's not, it's not just that it was consensual. He's saying that there was money that was exchanged uh, for, for services. You can use services can be a vague term. I don't know what, what services were, were being paid for. So it's not just now a he said, she said, whether he did the thing or didn't do the thing. He's saying he, he essentially that he did the thing and that it was consensual, but that he paid for something. So now it's not just an issue of, you know, did he commit sexual assault or not? It's almost an argument of, did he commit sexual assault or did he commit a legal prostitution? both of which would result in a suspension from the NFL. So I don't think there's a world, truthfully, that Deshaun Watson is not going to miss any games. I'm, I'm almost certain that he's going to miss a handful of games, if not more. And my prediction was probably, yeah, we'll see, verified, confirmed. The Texans did not have a first or second round pick because of some boneheaded trades with the Miami Dolphins once upon a time. Um, but their first pick in the third round, the Texans have a number of holes on that roster. The first pick of their entire draft was a quarterback. Um, and that tells you that they, they do not think that they're going to have their quarterback uh, for at least a, a significant portion of the season. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, is it, am I going to say Watson's going to miss the whole season? No, but uh, there's going to be a significant chunk of the season that he misses. So the name, image, and likeness laws, you said by the end of 2021, there could be a federal legislation that allows for all college athletes to be paid? Yeah, put, put it this way. We, we like, so we had a Senator, Senator Eric Lesser on from Massachusetts, and we had a Senator on from New York, this guy, Joe Adabo. Um, they were both talking about uh, the sports betting context, but context applies uh, elsewhere. Like, we were like, okay, everyone wants sports betting to be legal. Like, I'm sure the people that, that hate sports betting and that's going to ruin the sanctity of the state, they exist, but they're far outnumbered at this point, being from 2021. So, like, what is the delay? Like, let's just make sports betting legal in New York, in Massachusetts. Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. So both guys said it in really interesting ways, which I, I learned a lot from both podcasts. And Senator Lesser in Massachusetts is kind of more, you know, I think he's more of like a blue blood. He went to Harvard. And Joe Adavo is more of like a, uh, we'll say like a hustler and a grinder. Like, he's more of a guy that was like on the streets. So two different personalities. Like, and Lesser worked for like, you know, he worked uh, in the White House when Obama was there. So it's like two, and like, Adabo was like, you know, working at a dumpy law firm. Like I've worked at once upon a time. So there's like completely different personalities. Mm -hmm. Now I, I say that not just to, to tell you about the podcast. There are people that want for their career to be the person that got their sports betting bill passed in that state and in this state. So there's a fight. There's fights between guys that resemble Lesser and Adabo. And then there's going to be five versions of Lesser and five versions of Adabo. And they're all on the floor and they all have individual bills and they're all fighting to get that bill passed. And they'll go up for debate and they're going, hey, what should we talk about? And 10 people will start talking at the same time. So I've been in, you know, I, I was like the seventh grade class president or vice president. I've been in fraternity debates. You know, I've, I've been in sports teams. We have debates, fantasy draft rooms. Like those things don't go well. People get really pissed off. And if you don't, you know, if the clock runs out and you don't pass something for a certain legislative uh, bill, something for you don't pass it, like move on to the next thing. So, uh, yeah, it's a matter of prioritizing what's really important in the country. So as much as you and I, like sports betting, paying college athletes, those are like number one and two, education bills, you know, reform, fixing schools, uh, fixing tax bills. Like, those are kind of more important in, in life, um, especially with COVID and the pandemic. So. Um, the, the only reason I, I predict the end of 2021 for sports, uh, for name, image, and likeness, paying college athletes, is because high-level people uh, at the state level and at the federal level are being asked by their constituency, hey, make this bill a national sports betting or sports uh, name, image, and likeness. Um, mm -hmm. This is really important because it's going to ruin recruiting across the country. So right now, we just covered it in our podcast last night, there's five states uh, that are passing laws that go into effect on July 1st. So right. it's literally, like, there's no no ifs, ands, or buts. Starting July 1st in five states, athletes can get paid. So that's Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, and New Mexico. So if you are an athlete that entered the transfer portal, okay, and you want to make sure your last year of college, you're a senior, you want to get paid a little bit of coin, right? You want to make a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. um, why not transfer from the Tennessee Volunteers to the University of Miami? Like, why not do that? You can transfer now and not have to sit out of here. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so everyone's like, oh, yeah, maybe that's going to happen. Like, it's not maybe going to happen. It's actually it's, happening. Yeah. It's happening at the high school level. Like, why go to, you know, uh, again, like South Carolina Gamecock, where you could go to Florida, or you could go to Al Alabama. Um, so it's having an impact on recruiting right now. And people love college football. They love college basketball. They love all sports. Right. They are going to, to the federal lawmakers and asking them to make that bill. I don't think that's happening in a sports betting context. And I certainly don't think it's happening in a, in a cannabis context.
we've covered a whole lot again thanks thanks so much for for sticking with us and, and giving us you know your expertise advice um if there's anything else you'd like to add before we finish up now would be perfect time yeah so i'm uh i'm brandon a pleasure um i'm at sports law lust on instagram and twitter uh and my podcast called conduct detrimental uh, we, we basically, uh, we try to say it's like lawyers talking at a sports bar. We give you the legal topics, but we approach it just like normal fans. So we covered the Tom Wilson stuff, whether or not it should be actually constituted assault. Um, Brandon, while we were uh, right about to record, the Rangers got fined $250,000 for their comment on Twitter when wow. Tom Wilson was fined $5,000. So, I mean, it's a, it's, you know, is that sports law? I mean, I don't know, but it's a question of uh, punishment and punishment is very much a legal term. So we, we cover kind of, let's we'll say areas of this intersection of sports law, who's who better to talk about those issues than a lawyer. And that's the type of voice that we bring to Conduct Detrimental. Absolutely. And anyone watching this, definitely make sure to check out his podcast, the number one sports law podcast in the country. And again, thank you so much, Dan Lust for being on and joining with us today. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Yes, my pleasure.